the short list of those things you want to do once you go to Israel would be to be in the city of Jerusalem and pray at the Western Wall. You really just want to do that. Hi, this is Barry Phillips, a 10-minute tour, day number three of a second week concerning Akarimot, or after the death. Yes, I've had that experience on a few occasions of being able to go and touch my hand to that wall or to put my face toward that wall, whose stones are actually rubbed smooth by the thousands, perhaps millions, that have gone and prayed there. Let's read from the book of Leviticus of the Ikra, chapter number 17. Verse 1 says, And Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to Aaron and to his sons and to all the children of Israel, and say to them, This is the word which Yahweh has commanded, saying, Any man from the house of Israel who slays a bull or a lamb or a goat in the camp, or slays it outside the camp, and does not bring it to the door of the tent of appointment, to bring an offering to Yahweh by, before the dwelling place of Yahweh, blood guilt is reckoned to that man. He has shed blood, and that man shall be cut off from among his people. In order that the children of Israel bring their slaughterings, which they slaughter in the open field, they shall bring them to Yahweh at the door of the tent of appointment to the priests, and slaughter them as slaughterings of peace offerings to them. And so we understand that Yah wants a central or a centralized altar system. The idea is that if we offer in the open field, then we are setting up or establishing our own protocols, our own private altar. We talked about this here recently. It's not that you can't slay wild game. You can. The blood must be poured out on the ground. Do not consume the blood. But when it comes to offering to Yah, what it is that he's looking for is an act of worship. He says, it's at my house then that I want to receive this, that it would be officiated over by my selected priesthood. Another way of understanding it is only the high priest or the priestly family is authorized to manipulate the blood, that is to catch it in a basin and to apply it to the appropriate place as the specific protocols of an offering would require. So Yah wants things done a particular way. Now, does this say to us that we can only pray in Jerusalem? Obviously not. Yah hears prayers the world over in a variety of different places. Certainly any of, any of us could testify as to how we prayed and Yah heard and answered our prayer. And he did so even though we were not in Jerusalem. Should we pray in Jerusalem? Is it a benefit? <laughs> I think so. Uh, praying, I pray oftentimes facing toward Jerusalem, turning my face toward the place where his name is inscribed. I believe there's an ability and the efficacy that is given to that. But... Um, Here's the important part that we need to understand today. And that is that the altar that we pray about or pray in the authority of determines the ability of our prayers. And let me explain. Can you imagine standing before Yah and declaring our doctrinal belief and then praying based on that doctrinal belief and Yah grimacing because our doctrinal belief is wrong. It's an error. It's some, some uh, erroneous interpretation of text, per se. So we have our English translations and we have this idea of what the text says we go running to the throne declaring, this is what your word says. And so I pray because this is what your word says. But that's not what his word says. How often has that happened? Probably more times than we would like to know or, or think about. We must declare what the altar declares. Now, when we look at the life of Yeshua, 
Yeshua walked uprightly, righteously according to the Torah. He presented himself according to the Torah as a Pesach lamb offering. He presented himself, however, not on the altar of sacrifice. When Yeshua died, he was not a lamb laid on that altar. The Pesach lamb wasn't either. Yeshua died, uh, in my opinion, and you're, you're welcome to disagree, and, and there's a variety of thoughts on this, and I acknowledge it. In my opinion, he died hanging on a tree on the Mount of Olives overlooking the Temple Mount complex. And that's just the way I see it. If you disagree, that's fine. I'm not going to argue with you. But he did not die. Here's the key point. He did not die as a sacrifice on that altar. Although all of the sacrifices that were presented on that altar testified of him. They described him and some revelational understanding about him. To pray from the authority or the doctrines or the protocols of an altar that Yah has not sanctioned is to then reinterpret who Yeshua is. Going to the Father in the name of Yeshua, declaring him or aspects about him that do not belong to him, what causes problems. And I'll give you a brief example. So we go to the Father. I thank you, Father, that Yeshua or Jesus has taken away the bondage of the law for me and that I am free from all of those commands and that I don't have to go through any of that Torah requirement stuff in order to please you. Then that is to attribute to Yeshua a level of grace, as it's understood, the opposite of Torah, which is erroneous in its doctrine, creating and declaring an aspect of Yeshua pertaining to us that does not exist. How far does our prayer go? Not very far. So we need to understand that Yah wants us to declare to him what that altar declares. Now here's another aspect of this. The covenant that Yah gave to Abraham is still intact. That covenant has never been changed. It's never been called to an end. That covenant is still intact. Matter of fact, it is the foundational covenant by which Yeshua then provides atonement and cleansing and deliverance for us. Yah has never reneged on that covenant. He's never called it to an end. It still stands. It's intact. It's effective before his throne. It has legal decree and standing for us when we approach him. So we're being called to walk in the faithfulness of Abraham, to walk in the belief of Abraham, to, uh, to walk after Yah, believe in him, to deliver things that we cannot see. Believe in him for things that require the miraculous such as a son in an old age. So we believe him, even though we don't see the manifestation of it, we trust him. And if it doesn't come to us in our lifetime, then we believe it to be fulfilled in our future generations. But one way or the other, Yah is going to deliver on that covenant. When you and I understand then the tenets of the covenant of Abraham, we begin to, to realize what it is that Yah promised to him. We pray concerning that, and Yah is saying, yes, my people are agreeing with me. They're praying according to my word. They're praying according to my promises. They're praying according to my covenant. They're praying according to the completed work of my son, Yeshua. They're praying to me in the authentic understanding of who my son is. I can now move in their midst and I can bring about great deliverance and I can bring about great revelation. We need to get the altar right so that we can pray right, so that we can receive what it is that he's asking us to receive. A lot to think about, a lot to chew on today.
We'll see you again tomorrow. To then, Shalom.